Chapter 7 is substitution reactions. So let's try to understand what is a basic substitution reaction, right? So you have a carbon with a group, okay? So X in this case can be a chlorine, bromine, iodine, OH2 plus and OTS and we call these all of these as leaving groups. So we have a carbon with a leaving group. So anything, okay, either chlorine, bromine, all these are the leaving groups. So this is your leaving group right here. Okay, so we have a carbon with a leaving group and we also need a nucleophile for this reaction. Okay, so a nucleophile, again, the basic structure what you're looking at here is anything with a negative charge or electron pair is your nucleophile. So in this reaction then, a nucleophile will replace the leaving group, okay? So the name itself says leaving group, that means it has to leave. So leaving group will leave and that will, nucleophile will take its place. So if you compare the products here, right, starting material and the product, so your nucleophile has taken place of your leaving group and that's why we call it a substitution. So substitution in this case, we are substituting your leaving group with a nucleophile, okay? So nucleophile, Okay, just for example, it can be OH minus as a negative charge, or it can be water as just an electron pair. So any one can be a nucleophile. Okay, so this is the basic uh, substitution reaction. Now, what we'll try to find out next is what are the different ways this reaction can take place. Okay, in other words, what are different pathways, or what are different mechanisms are possible for this reaction? All right, <clears throat> so this reaction has two possible pathways or the mechanisms, all right? So first one is you have your nucleophile and you have your carbon with a leaving group, right? So nucleophile can attack and leaving group can leave at the same time. All right. So nucleophile will go ahead and attack the carbon and that will form the bond and leaving group will leave at the same time. So you can imagine a situation where you have, let's say, apple in a tree, and then you throw the stone, or you throw a rock at the tree, and the apple falls off, right? So both the things happening at the same time, attacking and leaving at the same time, okay? So this, this could be one way, okay? A second way could be your leaving group will leave, all right? And that will create a carbocation that will create a cation. And since you have a positive charge on the carbon, we call it as carbocation. Okay, so leaving group can leave and it can form a carbocation. And then in step two, nucleophile can come in and form the bond. Okay, so in this case, we still have the same product. So nucleophile will form the bond with the carbon. And you lost X minus here, that will be your X minus right there. So if you compare, the products are the same in this in this case. So what's the difference here is how the reaction is taking place, right? So what, how the course of the reaction is happening, right? So nucleophile can attack, leaving group can leave. This can happen at the same time. Or leaving group can leave, create a carbocation, and then nucleophile can attack and form the bond, right? So when you have a mechanism where everything is happening in one step. Okay, so can I call this as one step mechanism, right? Attacking, leaving at the same time. This mechanism is called as SN2. Okay, I'll explain what is SN2 and SN1 is, and this mechanism is called as SN1. Okay, so SN2 stands for substitution, nucleophilic, Bimolecular. Okay, and this will be substitution nucleophilic unimolecular. Okay, so what are we looking at here is when you are doing the reaction, if you look at step one, okay, so in, in step one, how many molecules are involved okay, in the reaction, right? So in this case, you have a nucleophile and your carbon with a leaving group, right? So we also call this alkyl halide, right? So you have a nucleophile and your electrophile, both are involved in step one. So two structures involved. 
So that is bimolecular because two molecules are involved. So that is called as bimolecular. And this is substitution nucleophilic. So you're using a nucleophile to substitute your leaving group. So that's why it is substitution nucleophilic bimolecular because two molecules are playing the role in the step one. Okay. Now if you look at SN1, right? How many molecules are playing the role in the step one? So this is your step one and this is step two. So if you look at a step one, then there's only one molecule, which is your electrophile. In this case, leaving group will leave. Okay. So there's only one molecule playing the role here. That's why it's called as substitution nucleophilic unimolecular. Okay, so that's where the name is coming from. Unimolecular means one molecule okay, playing the role. All right, so if we can write down all the features of SN2 reaction, so it's SN2, this is a one step reaction. All right, so this reaction takes place in one step, and it's a one step reaction. We call that as concerted reaction. And SN1 is a two-step process, right? so it's a two-step reaction. Okay, and step one, leaving group will leave, and that also involves formation of a carbocation. So formation of a carbocation. Okay, so this is an important feature here. How I discriminate between SN1 and SN2, right? So SN1 is a two-step process and involves the formation of a carbocation. However, in case of SN2, we don't see any formation of a carbocation. So this is very, very important. Okay, make sure you keep an, keep an eye on the carbocation anytime you do SN1 reaction. All right, so now we know there are two mechanisms, SN2 and SN1. Now, if you compare the energetics of the two mechanisms, right? So let's say if you have SN2, then you have the alkyl halide and nucleophile, right? So those are here, here. So there's a reactants right here. So you have your two reactants, your alkyl halide and nucleophile, right? So they will react and there will be an intermediate, okay? So they will reach to an intermediate from here to here. There should be some energy required and that's called as energy of activation, right? So when you provide the energy, right? So what happens basically is on the top here, they will form an intermediate and that intermediate will look like this. So where you show that you have your, so your nucleophile and your carbon is forming a bond. At the same time, your leaving group is leaving. So you have delta negative charge here, delta negative, and then you have those balanced charge here, right? So it's called an intermediate where you show that this bond is breaking and this bond is forming and both the reactions are happening at the same time, right? So nucleophile will attack and leaving group will leave. So that's your nucleophile will attack and leaving group will leave at the same time. So bond breaking and bond forming happening at the same time. So bond breaking and bond forming at the same time. And this side is, you know, you write down your product. All right, so that's how we compare the energetics of the reaction. Right? If you look at the SN1 mechanism, then SN1 is a two-step mechanism, right? So step one is your reactant here. What is your reactant here? Is your alkyl halide, right? So that's your reactant, okay? Leaving group will leave, so that's your energy of activation right here, right? So leaving group will leave, and then this, okay? This place here is your formation of a carbocation. So you form your carbocation here, okay? Your third carbocation is stable here, it's tertiary. That's why you can see the stability, right? So energy goes down means that is stable. And then your nucleophile will come and react. So here your nucleophile will come and form the bond. And that will get you your product, which is the product. All right, so that's how you compare the energetics here. So this is a one-step reaction, right? So attacking leaving at the same time. Here, leaving group will leave, that will create a carbocation, and then your nucleophile will come and form the bond. Okay. So on this side, you have reaction progress, how the reaction is progressing, time, or whatever you like. And this side you have energy. So here the energy increases, okay, to carry carry the reaction, right? So that is the energy of activation. So anytime you run a reaction, you have to provide some form of energy, right? So that's your energy of activation. In this case, you have energy of activation here as well. All right, so these are the energetics of SN1 and SN2 reactions. So let's take a real example now and try to find out which way to go, SN1 or SN2, right? So if you have a reaction like this, how we decide? So for that, we had to refer to a chart, right? So it all depends on what kind of carbon you have. 
Okay, so we are interested in the carbon that has a leaving group, right? So we are looking at this carbon right here, okay, or this carbon right here, because that has a leaving group attached to it. In this case, we are looking at this carbon right here, or this carbon, because that's where the reaction is taking place, right? So when I say attacking and leaving, it's going to happen on this carbon, right? So what kind of carbon is that? Okay, that is your methyl carbon. Okay, that is your primary carbon. Okay, carbon attached to one other carbon is primary. Carbon attached to two other carbon is secondary, and this will be tertiary. All right. So if you look at the mechanism of SN1, right? SN1 involves formation of a carbocation. Okay. And if your carbocation is stable, okay, the molecule will be very happy to go SN1, and this is your tertiary. So tertiary carbocation is stable. That's why it always undergoes SN1 mechanism, right? However, these carbocations are not stable. I guess if you have a choice, they will prefer to go SN2. So these are SN2, okay, because the carbocation is not stable, right? So then you're left with secondary, right? A secondary can go both ways. So in this case, you have to look at your nucleophile. So what kind of nucleophile is that? Is it a strong, strong nucleophile? So basically what you're looking at is a negative charge that will prefer SN2. And if it's a weak nucleophile, so which is weak nucleophile, that will be just electron pair that will prefer SN1. So this is a basic breakdown, okay, just to decide on the reaction. There's more to it and we'll, we'll keep adding on top of this as we go on. But for now, let's make it a general chart like this so you can decide SN1 or SN2. Right? So then we're referring to our reaction here with the chart. Right? So we're looking very interested in the carbon that has a leaving group attached to it. Okay, that's the carbon right there. Okay? And what kind of carbon is that? Is it a primary, secondary, tertiary? So you have a carbon attached to a leaving group and that has one other carbon. So we are looking at this situation right here. Okay? So that is primary carbocana. From, sorry, this carbon is primary. Again, we are looking only at this carbon right here. That carbon is primary, which fits right here. Okay, and primary under always undergoes SN2, so that will be your SN2 mechanism. All right. So what happened in SN2 then? If you go back and look at the mechanism here, so SN2 attacking and leaving at the same time. Right. So nucleophile will attack, and leaving group will leave at the same time. Right. And nucleophile will take the place of leaving group. Right. Because we are doing substitution. Substitution means leaving group will go and nucleophile will take its place. All right. So in this case, that's your carbon you're interested in because that's where the reaction is taking place. Right? That's attached to one other carbon. So OH will take place of leaving group and you lost here Br minus because Br is leaving with the electron pair. So you had the Br minus as your byproduct. All right. Now in this case, in, especially in organic chemistry, we actually don't write the byproducts. So if you don't write this, it's fine. What we really care about is the product that has a carbon atom in it, right? So this is your real product, okay? This is just a byproduct. So if you write it, it's good. If you don't write it, it's fine, all right? So another example here is you again have a carbon with a leaving group, right? So that's your carbon with a leaving group, and then you have your nucleophile, right? So first thing what you're looking at is what kind of carbon is that? Okay, is it primary, secondary, tertiary, methyl? Right? So that carbon here attached to two other carbons. Right? So that carbon attached to two other carbon that is secondary. Okay, so secondary carbon cannot tell you anything. Okay, it can go both ways. So then you are looking at your nucleophile. So what kind of nucleophile you have? You have O minus. So since you have a nucleophile with negative charge, that means that will be SN2 mechanism. Right? So SN2 attacking and leaving at the same time. Right? So the first thing you compare, okay, your nucleophile and your alkyl halide, okay, and decide a mechanism based on the chart, okay. Once you find the mechanism SN2, then you write the mechanism with the curved arrows, right. So whenever, whenever you say mechanism, that means you're writing with curved arrows, right. So negative charge will attack, that's your nucleophile, and leave your group will leave at the same time, because that is SN2. And nucleophile will take place of your leaving group. And you'll have the Br minus as the byproduct. Right. So now when I say nucleophile, 
not just O minus is your nucleophile. Okay, that's taking part in the reaction, but this whole group, okay, so O with the CH3, this whole thing is your nucleophile. So make sure you carry forward the whole thing, okay, in place of the leaving group, okay, because this whole thing is together. So in this example, we also have a carbon with a leaving group, right? And then you have a nucleophile. So it has to be a substitution reaction. So what kind of carbon is that? That carbon is added to three other carbons, one, two, and three, right? So that is your tertiary. So tertiary is going to be always SN1. So that will be SN1 mechanism. So what happens in SN1 then? In SN1, leaving group will leave, okay? That will create a carbocation, right? So this carbon right in the center here, Okay, that's the carbon has a leaving group, so that will get the positive charge. Okay, remember the formation of a carbocation. All right, and then your nucleophile will can come in. So nucleophile, okay, in this case, you can just directly take the negative charge or you can write down the electron pair and then take it either way is fine. So there will be a bond between those two, all right? So you'll have the OH and Cl minus as your byproduct all right so that's your product all right again when you write sn1 mechanism make sure it's two-step mechanism step one leaving group will leave and form the carbocation and step two nucleophile will go and attack the carbocation okay negative will go to the positive and then you get the product all right all right so let's assume that you have a reaction right where we have the carbon with the leaving group then you have your nucleophile i just wrote it differently here all right. <clears throat> but again, we just have to follow the same same rules. Okay. So carbon with a leaving group, what kind of carbon is that? That is secondary. Okay. The secondary can go both ways. So you're relying on your nucleophile. So what kind of nucleophile you have? You have a weak nucleophile, which is just the electron pair. Right. So that's your weak nucleophile. So electron pair and secondary will make it SN1. All right. So what happens in SN1 then? Okay. Leaving group will leave. And that forms a carbocation. Because we're going SN1 now. That will form the carbocation. And then in step two, your nucleophile will come in and form the bond. Right? So what I'll do is I'll write down the nucleophile like this. You can see all the all the bonds and electron pairs. So in this case, you don't have a negative charge. Instead, we have electron pair. So that will go and form the bond. Okay? So That's how it will look like. All right, and don't forget that you still have the Cl minus, which is lost in the reaction. All right, so oxygen will form the bond with the carbon. So there will be a carbon oxygen bond in your product. Again, oxygen has three bonds now, so it should have the formal charge. Now, here's here's the problem here in this mechanism that anytime you have a former charge on your product, okay, such as you have a positive negative, then it's not considered as a stable product. Okay. So in order to make it stable, you have to get rid of the charge. Okay. So if I want to get rid of a charge, then what I have to do here is I, I have a negative charge here and I have a H. Okay. That means I can do another acid base reaction here, okay, to get rid of the hydrogen. So that can be your base. Right, so H A and B minus. So this is simple acid base, Bronsted acid base reaction. So in this case, the negative charge will go pick up the hydrogen and that will leave the electron pair back on the oxygen. That will get you your OH as the stable product. Okay, so in this case, you have the two electron pairs on the oxygen, so there should not be any charge. And then you have HCl as your byproduct. So this is your product. Okay. So anytime you're using weak nucleophiles, okay, weak nucleophiles such as H2O or NH3, using NH3, all right, are you just using alcohol, all right? So these have just electron pair. Then you have to be careful about your formal charges. And if you have a formal charge, then we just run other acid-base reaction, right? So this is your Bronsted base and Bronsted acid. Okay, to get rid of the hydrogen, extra hydrogen you have, and that will get you the product. All right. So weak nucleophiles, 
one more step, okay? Other than that, everything else is the same, right? So if you're doing SN1, then the same mechanism, leaving group will leave, create a carbocation, and then your nucleophile will go and form the bond, all right? <clears throat> but at the last step, you have to take care of the charge.